heretics, I, God will judge that. Okay, God will judge that. And and there, there are some say, well, they're they're baptized. You know, uh, hey, Baptists are baptized. They got to be baptized to be in their church. You know, the Methodists baptize people, right? And Catholics baptize people. Well, they're baptized. Well, but they're baptized not according to scripture, they're baptized a different way. Uh, so you can't take a part and then modify that part, come out with your own scheme, and then teach on that scheme so everything fits into that scheme. You see what I'm saying? Because it's basically reading into the scriptures what you want to come out of the scriptures. We, we try to, uh, we're supposed to read out of what are the scriptures saying to us. And that's why it makes it a little bit more difficult. And I think why most of the time in churches of Christ, why uh, Bible study, if you get into good ones, are a little deeper more involved, challenge, can I say challenging? Are, are our studies here a little challenging at times? Yeah, okay, so, so we go back now. Let us, let us return to the Lord individually. He's torn us individually. Why? That he may heal us. He has struck us down. And he will also bind us up. Why? Because he's a good God. He, he's like a father that loves his son. He chastises him because he loves him, but he heals too, see? But sometimes you've got to chastise him. Uh, let us know. Let us, let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. How are we going to know the Lord? By the covenant, by the word of God, by the Bible. That's the only way we can know him. His going out is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. That's a renewal, isn't it? So here they've reached the depths of depravity, <laughs> okay, so to speak. But they can be, the individuals can be restored. But look at verse 4. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? Is that the people or is that the state? That's the state. What shall I do with you, O Judah? Again, that's the state. Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. Do you think that Hosea's words, Amos's words, aren't hurting the state? Think, think about what the, the priest told Amos. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm telling the king, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, it was hurting them because they knew they were wrong. But he hews them. What, what is hew? Hewn. That's like taking an axe to something. Ch -ch -ch chopping off. Chopping off. I have slain them by what? The words of my mouth. Isn't that what the Lord does? And that what he teaches us? To bring down arguments? To speak the truth of God's word. That's how we, we win. We don't, we don't go out here and fight in spiritual battles with knives and guns and stuff. Okay? We just don't. That's what a state religion does. Right? That's what Mohammedism, yeah, Islam does. Why? Muhammad was a warlord. What's the difference between Jesus and Muhammad? Muhammad was a warlord. Jesus was for peace. You can't miss that distinction. How does Islam spread? The power of the sword. 
How does communism spread? The power of the sword. Verse 6, for I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, but sacrifice is demanded not for God, but for the individual. Sacrifice is for us to learn to be like God, right? It's for our benefit to sacrifice the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Verse 7, and here's where I wanted to, to get to. But like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. There they dealt faithlessly with me. There are a couple of different ways to look at this, but I'll ask the question. This uses treacherously. Yeah, faithlessly, treacherously. Mm hmm. But here's the question. What covenant was Adam under? There wasn't one yet. Was it? Was it? That was just a just That was a personal relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and I asked a question a few weeks ago leading up to this. Was there a covenant with the spirit of Adam before Adam was created? And is there a covenant with our spirits before God brings us forth that is kind of like, yes, I'm going to be faithful to you, and then we get here, and then we grow up, and we... <laughs> We transgress and we're in a rebellion to God. Is, is there a, an original covenant? Now, I still haven't made a decision on that, but some of the translators, some of the commentators have thankfully, maybe, uh, kind of helped on this because they say Adam there is not... Adam in the garden, Adam is a metaphor for human beings. Okay? So, but, like human beings, they transgress the covenant. Or, we could say, like mere human beings. Like Mere human beings that don't know God, who should have known God because they had the covenant, but like mere human beings, like the Gentiles out there who didn't have a covenant, didn't grow up, can, can we say this? For they're like people who didn't grow up in the church. Okay? They've transgressed the covenant. Does that kind of make sense? How many people that do you know? Maybe, okay, you grew up in the church, you grew up in the church, Danny, you grew up in the church, Lynn, you didn't. I didn't, Karen didn't. Okay? But how many people do you all know of that grew up in the church? that have left the church. And what are they acting like? People who just didn't know the Lord and didn't understand the covenant. Part of that could have been them themselves, but part of it could have been that, like you said, we didn't nurture them after they were baptized to keep them on the... So it's kind of a... So like Danny was talking yeah, so about it here a few weeks ago. Taught him facts about the Bible but didn't teach him how to relate to the Lord. Basically. And if that's all we're doing is teaching them facts about the Bible and not having a relationship with the Lord, then there's a hunger, there's a thirst that's there and 
what's going to creep in? Well, the ways of the world, right? Well, all right, history teacher, okay, history teacher, what's more fun, learning about facts and dates or actually talking about history? Talking about history. Yeah. Talking about it. And w listen, I, I disagree with, with what's being taught in many of these denominational churches. But one thing that they do do, they talk about how God is important in your life. I was going to say, that's, they are very successful in teaching that portion that we have, I think we have miser failed miserably in doing. They mm -hmm. believe that that Holy Spirit is part of their daily life that guides them much more than what we've ever taught. But they also believe that that Holy Spirit is leading them away from parts of the Bible. And that's... And the Holy Spirit isn't divided. The Holy Spirit doesn't say, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved to one group and to another group he who believes is saved and later needs to be baptized and to another group he who is baptized is saved needs to be taught to believe later. That doesn't happen. But they would agree the two different, those two different major groups would say, well, that's how it is. And that's how the Holy Spirit is directing us. The Holy Spirit directs us through the Word of God. Now, there are things that the Holy Spirit does, I believe, apart from the Word of God, like, I mean, one thing, He takes our prayers and kind of interprets our groanings to the Father. Okay? We recently studied that on Wednesday night. <laughs> but it doesn't mean He's making us do something like a Calvinist would teach. You can't be saved unless the Holy Spirit makes you be saved. You don't have a choice. And, and if the Holy Spirit comes on you, you don't have a choice. You, you just have to do it. And you may not, not even realize it. But, and then once you're saved, there's nothing you can do about that either. You can't be lost. <laughs> Uh, a situation arose and the comment was made I don't feel like the Holy Spirit is moving in that direction now what does that are moving me in that direction exactly yeah what, what? <laughs> that just has no meat whatsoever uh that's using the Holy Spirit as an excuse for me not to participate in that. Yes, it's subjectivism. It's it's like I said, I'm sitting at the stoplight, you know. Okay, Lord, if you want me to change jobs, you want me to take this job with this new company, then make that light turn to green. Okay. And if you don't, just keep it red. The light turns to green. Oh, that's a sign from God. I, I got to take that new job with that new company, right? Don't know what that yellow was in there, but here we go. Or you get a light that's but, messed up and it never changes. And you're going, hmm. Well, then you would know it was God <laughs> speaking to you through the Holy Spirit, see? But, uh, but, but that's the formulation that some people have. And, you know that they make it on the grounds of 
I want something, so I'm going to provide a test. Like, now remember Gideon in the Old Testament? Put the fleece out. Okay? Put the fleece out. Tonight, if there's dew on the fleece, that's one thing. Tomorrow night, if there's no dew, you go back and read it. I may have them backwards. But the test was given by God. It wasn't an individual test of <coughs> Gideon. And there sometimes maybe there is an individual test <coughs> where the individual puts the test out. But that's not for us. What, what does Jesus always say when somebody asks him a question? Okay? What do you think about this? Well, what's the Holy Spirit telling you? No. He says, what said the Scriptures? There's your starting point. Then you've got to make sure it's in con... Uh, I don't want to get into today's this morning's lesson. <laughs> but you see, you see the point. Okay, I, I hope you see the point. Like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. They have dealt faithlessly or treacherously with me. How treacherously are these people dealing with God when they take His word and they take out the parts that they want and say, "Now this is what we are." doing and if you want to be a part of our group you have to do it this way if you don't do it this way then you are anathema you you are a heretic and you can't be a part of our group we'll kick you out and you go to hell hmm verse 8 Gilead, which was a city of refuge, we talked about that before, is a city of evildoers, tracked with blood. Why? Because they do bad. They run up there. It's like a sanctuary city. You run up there and you pay off the judges. And you hide for a little while. You go do some more mischief. You run back up there. You pay off the judges. Right? As robbers lie and wait for a man, so the priests band together. They murder on the way to Shechem. Shechem used to be a, a, a holy place, but even the priests were robbing people. They commit villainy. Verse 10, In the house of Israel I have seen a horrible thing. In the now, what's the house of Israel? I believe that's the king's house, the ruler's house, okay? I have seen a horrible thing. Ephraim's whoredom is there. Israel is defiled. I think there was an idol set up in the king's house. We know there was one at Samaria, at, at, uh, <coughs> <laughs> Boy, isn't that awful. Dan, and what was the name of the city? Uh, it, Bethel becomes Beth, Beth Aden. Okay. But at Bethel, they had the golden calf. That was, that was where worship, that's where the priests were supposed to be. So why, why wouldn't you expect them to have a small golden calf in a king's house? One of those refuge cities? Yeah. Uh, Rainbow, uh, it says gold on Ramoth, but that's Ramoth Gilead. But but no, no, I was thinking of where it says Ephraim, uh, Hordom is there, Bethel, which then 
in the scriptures they change it to Beth Aven. It was Bethel, house of God, becomes the house of trouble. But Israel, the nation, is defiled. Individuals can come out of this, but the nation's defiled. Now, verse 11, I think it, it's hard to tell. <coughs> Quite possibly, verse 11 is split that for you, o, for you also, O Judah, a harvest is appointed, not a complete destruction, but a harvest. Uh, what is a harvest? It's a separation, isn't it? They, they just harvested the maize north of us. So they took the top off the maize. Now stuff, the stubble's left. Uh, uh, they'll take that. Um, back in those days, you have the grain, and they flip the grain up, and the chaff goes away. That, that's harvest but it's just not like burning the whole wheat field. That's destruction. Judah's not going to be. But does that belong here? Does that belong in chapter 7? The scholars don't know. I don't know. But it seems like it's, it's kind of like in the middle there. When I just restore the fortunes of my people, fortunes of my people when I would heal Israel and the iniquity of Ephraim is revealed and the evil deeds of Samaria. I think those all kind of belong in chapter 7. Half of verse 11 belongs really in chapter 7. Half of it maybe up here. I don't know. We'll take the whole thing in chapter 7, but we're not going to deal too much of it. But just understand that little bit of difference there. Israel's destroyed the nation. People can repent. Judah is going through a sorting out process. It'll survive as a nation. Then chapter 7 is going to deal with more destruction. These, these are these people that we've talked about who have followed the doctrines, creeds, or whatever. Creeds, that's the word I was trying to there think of go. earlier. <laughs> Just give me an hour and I'll come up with it. Uh, yeah. There is a great deal can be learned from their devoutness because many of them are highly educated in the word that they've added to it. They've accepted man's additions to it. Uh, I believe that every church house in this town that people are sitting in today, those people are seeking the same thing we are. And if their heart is right and they are truly seeking, the covenant of grace, Jesus, the Lord, the Lord, uh, Let's not beat them up too bad. They're, they are they are trying, mm -hmm. and and oftentimes in my life I have seen that we have condemned those who are actually probably more so on the right track than some of the ones in our group that were condemning them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Judgment begins in the house of God. But that's that's still that's a good conclusion to everything we've said today. Yeah. Judgment judgment is of God, and uh, like I said, there are there are great lessons and uh, to be learned 
outside of our gathering from those who are maybe even more devout than I am. Their direction is just a misdirection of what I believe. Yeah. It's and, and, and it all comes back to the saith the Lord. That that's where the failure arises as they fail, just like Jesus and the devil, the saith the Lord. Everything he did he backed up with scripture. And we have to be able to do that to have that same influence on them that they can have on us. That's come out right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's 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 tough because we 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 like it's it's a human um, it's a human trait that we like to put down people that don't believe the same way that we do. Regardless of what it's about. Regar yeah, whether it's politics or whatever. So, and that comes from both directions because uh, maybe not, not tonight's lesson, next Sunday night's lesson deals more with the scorn and derision of the Lord's people who are the ones who are really being called back trying to do what's right. Okay? Because I, I would grant you that nine times out of ten, ninety-nine times out of a hundred, you sit down with someone to explain to them the right way and have a an honest conversation with them, not not pounding on them, but just opening up the Bible, opening up the scriptures, talking with them and and uh, uh, providing the proper context and such when it comes down to the end of it there'll be scorn on you there'll be derision on you okay and that derision will be you Church of Christers are all the same you're just a bunch of water dogs. You just want to get people wet. Okay? So yeah, we need to be loving. We need to be kind. We need to express the truth. But remember, when we're talking to them, there's a reason why they're on that other side. There's a reason why they choose those creeds that they have chosen. Some of it's tradition. Some of it is, you people have just caused trouble all these years, and you're just here to cause trouble now. Well, if the truth causes trouble, whose fault is that? It's the individual. We can preach the truth in love, and that's what we're called to do, isn't it? And if you see me not doing that, call me on it. Okay? Call me on it. And prob probably if I have a fault, and this is one because of experiences that I've had, I'm not a mixer. You see that, right? I'm not a mixer. I'm not a chamber of commerce, slap somebody on the back. How you doing, Joe? Man, good to see you. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry. 
I'm not. I've been hurt by too many people like that. But I can love people and I can teach them the truth. And if they disregard that and hurt me, I can move on. I have no problem with it. Because I know who's going to judge me.